OPM announced that it's pausing hiring for around 7,800 positions that could be replaced by AI the over time. huge tech and business news in videos on top of the world was in large part the hip hop boom in the new book on the last year this app is about anything but I'm sure that people are down to show you what they are and they can go in real time. Hello and welcome to What's Up Punk, we're taking a look at the myriad of subgenres underneath the umbrella of punk. Today we'll be taking a look at Now Punk. Welcome not to could have been or might have be. Welcome to the septic tank that is now. Uh, now as the uh, 2000s to 2020s, future watcher. Welcome to Now Punk. This will make me an apostate in the house of Gibson, but let's continue. I hate this one. Out of 25 videos covering various forms of punk, this is the one I call bullshit on. This and post-cyberpunk. In my opinion, once again, I am no great arbiter, no prophet on hills, dispensing the wisdom of Solomon. This is all my opinion. But there is no now punk. There is no post-cyberpunk. There's just cyberpunk and whatever's on the other side of the singularity. It's the Zathras of it all. You are the beginning of the story. In the middle of the story, and the end of the story, that creates the next great story. Ah. I mean, come on. Watch Dogs Alone has putting the boots to corpos, the mob, hackers, solos, and fixers. The protagonist does a net crash. The only thing really separating this from a Gibson book is the lack of drugs, Clara and the Wrench being the only ones with good fashion sense. So what's the fix? Sledgehammers and fire. No! Sledgehammers on fire! This is fucking ridiculous. What is now punk? Other than an absolute waste of time? God, the name alone, now punk. Certainly, you get now is kind of a moving target. Shit, we might as well just say. In the not too distant future, next Sunday AD. Oh man, Fab's actually had something for this. Uh, ah. Now that's what I call punk genre. <sighs> anyway, now punk is a civic type of fiction set in a contemporary setting in which existing scientific elements play a prominent role, essential to the plot. Those elements can either be derived from hard science, computers, phones, biotech, skimmers, phone cloning, or from cultural science, fashion, marketing, pop culture, media. They are then combined in a way to express otherwise invisible flows of cultural data and manifest complex social structures, roughly following the pattern of input-output feedback. Now, Punk does not describe the world as it is, nor as the world could become, as Cyberpunk does, but instead it depicts a world as it is becoming. Not to say we don't stylize. Boy, hacker movies always make this seem way more exciting. Yeah, without the dramatic close-ups and like a booming techno score, real-life hacking is just... Piping. Oh! How's that for exciting, huh? The principle that our reality is literally a fiction, so that we could then identify sufficient characteristics to build this fiction genre. The emergence of the number of elements of our reality that seems to have been quoted literally from science fiction. Basically, one of the cornerstones of now punk is that our current world was created by people influenced by the media they watched and what was influential to them. It's the same kind of thought process that goes into video games, horror movies, making psychopaths that I think is nuttier than Nutter Butter. However, this I can groove with. Anyone that has built anything has said they were inspired by art, fiction, movies. Hell, there's, there's a human gene named Robotnikian after Robotnik, aka Eggman. Tablet computers were all over Star Trek TNG in 1987, and now they're everywhere. Aura warned us of a thought crime like police state. Well, look at the additions to the Tech Talk bill and you might be joining me in the faceless mob. Personal observation? Some of this is a lack of foresight on the part of SF writers. Gibson was pretty good at not putting down specific dates and hard numbers. Reading the giant monotic part of Burning Crow doesn't have a lot of in the way of cringe, but watching the movie, and don't get me wrong, I love giant monotic. Eh. Activating Pemex Memory Doubler. Your present capacity, 80 gigabytes. Yeah, just keep telling yourself that's a big file size there, Jimbo. So when the future came and it wasn't 100% as predicted, 
Riders railed back by plopping us down in the here and now. Ish. Present day. <laughs> Present time. <laughs> Technology. Um, look around. This, here, now, just a little bit more advanced. And drones. Now Punk loves drones. Okay, putting down the sarcasm stick for a moment. Just a moment. The September 11th attacks, ISIS, the 2008 global crisis, social media, corruption, globalism, are current focal points in this axis of fiction. With that, hacking and AI is a large part of now punk, and how two technological ethoses oppose each other. Information wants to be free, and information is power. In person of interest, the corpo netrunner Finch built the machine. I am the machine. An artificial super intelligence, its objective is to predict and prevent immediate terrorist attack and does so by analyzing immense amounts of surveillance data. The machine analyzes feeds from domestic organizations such as the NSA, as well as foreign agencies like Interpol to predict terrorist attacks and modify intelligence reports to include relevant data. That will allow the government to forestall terrorist activities. Remember back in 2011 when constantly being spied on was unnerving and not how are they going to use this to sell shit to me? A similar system is Watchdog CTOS. While not its primary function, which is being the operating system for a city, it is used to collect data, particularly blackmail data, that the Bloom Corporation that runs it has both used and sold to criminal organizations, and organizations like the FBI and CIA. It's never stated as such in the movie Upgrade, but there's probably a similar system as people are legally required to have trackers in their teeth. Information is power takes a different form than it has before the 2000 era. Paranoia fuels this punk genre. With a massive amount of data collected around us, a predictive model could be used to form a kind of techno fortune telling of the future. Knowledge of that predictive model could change the information. Hell, going sinless and off the grid would also work, choosing analog communication methods hiding from the system. So, knowledge of the system must remain clandestine, thus putting into conflict when information wants to be free. Also, with such an info-centric society as a now punk story would take place in, the currency is not currency, it's information. Not, not in the sense that you could buy a double-double in frauds with information. Yes, I am disgustingly Californian. Moving on. More of that, truth or secrets, has more worth than actual cash. However, the truth has a nasty way of getting out. That leads to another part of information is power. Not just having information, but the manipulation of it. Going back to person of interest, the machine, I'm the machine! goes from AI to AGI, gaining sapience. Absolutely. An ex MI6 agent had covertly built vigilance, a domestic terrorist, and created a terrorist event of mass destruction in their name to manipulate authorities into ordering Samaritan's activation. Samaritan, another AGI, is similar to the machine. I'm the machine! Unlike the machine, I'm the machine! It lacks a moral code. And being created sapient, not solely formed like the machine. Samaritan removes those seen as disruptive to law and order, preemptively. Samaritan manipulates the NSA, fixes elections, triggers stock market crashes, and kills those it sees as a threat. Changes data to gain results perceived as beneficial, buys useful corporations, and continues building an organization to support its own goals. The two AIs go to war, back in different ideologies. The machine believes in human free will, while Samaritan believes in firm guidance, eventually resulting in a global net crash killing both of them. Did you learn anything? I learned... I learned that everyone dies alone. I had hoped that you might have gleaned something a little less morbid. On a more physical sense of information manipulation, we have the critically acclaimed Summer Wars, where the antagonist, an AGI called the Love Machine, love this movie, goes apeshit on Oz, basically what the Zuck wanted the meta to be, but actually work. Oz becomes cyberspace, so having a rogue AGI running around causes real-world calamity, from infrastructure damage to loss of life. Besides that, like I said, drones, mostly security variants, along with smart homes and cars. Aesthetic. Gun hath to pick up sarcasm stick again. If you're in an urban area, look out your window. Just that. Exactly that. Any sense of style or panache will eaten away by corporal streamlining under the cover of modernity, when really it's just cost-effective. Maybe. Hopefully it's just me. My style has been called Bohemian Tech Wear Otaku. Not unfairly. In a narrative sense, we have a bit more to talk about. The point of now punk narrative is not 
so much how the character evolves from point A to point B, but rather how the character interacts with the cultural system, consciously or not. Serial Experiment in Lang could be seen as an example of this. It's a bit iffy. Lang starts out as a normal, if not socially awkward, non-wirehead junior high schooler. And by the middle of the season, her room looks like this. Mail? By the end, she's a god in the network called The Wire. Yeah, Lane's a trip. If you get a chance, watch it. The unfortunate case of Grey Trace is a better example, pretty diametrically opposite to Lane. Grey starts off as a charming analog grown ass man. Like, to the point it gets silly. Trying to insist his corporal wife and him make pizza as opposed to ordering pizza. Now, I love pizza. I love making pizza. That is a lazy Saturday activity, good sir. Not a I just got off work activity. Anyway, Gray is a man. He works on muscle cars and doesn't get all this new fangled technology taking our jobs. They took our job! Even though only like two cars in the whole movie are smart cars, the rest look pretty analog by my definition. But uh, whatever. Anyway, his lady smart car crashes. She's taken out and he's made a quadriplegic. An eccentric inventor offers to fix him with technology he originally derided. It comes with a big butt. He's not alone in his body, sharing it with an AGI Loa called Stem, offering help find his wife's killer. Along the way, unshackling Stem, making Grey his horse. Thank you. I now have full control. Hi! Both of those are extreme examples, but yeah, now Punk is less about the story and more about what's going on around the story. The society being a not so far off reflection of our own. Where did Now Punk start? The pro idea of Now Punk was already thought of and cited by Bruce Sterling and by William Gibson in 2005, referring to his, at the time, latest novel, The Zenith Angle. Bruce Sterling coined the new derivative subgenre, Now Punk, to describe the fiction that feels like cyberpunk, but now. Closeness of cyberpunk as our daily reality is nothing new. Gibson, by contrast to other writers, is often looking for something else. Things that aren't especially new or suddenly stand out as special. A changing world might reveal itself not in the never before seen, but in the re-seen. Or as Gibson better puts it, I've commenced with a sort of deep reading of the fuckness quotia of the day, he explained. I then have to adjust my fiction in relation to how fucked and how far out the present actually is. Love you, Will. Real life, now punks. You. Me. Now. Especially if you're one of those rogue hackers ferreting out truth or searching for secrets. Start so trying to keep up with the explosion of AI tools flooding the market, playing techno tea leaf reader. To see what's crap and what works. This one goes out to you. In the car. Hack the butt! Hack the butt! My recommendations. I am doing this under protest, as two of these are some of my favorite cyberpunk stories. Upgrade. A really good movie, I don't understand why it's not talked about more. With honestly really good effects, it skirts the line of now punk and cyberpunk, because some of the solos are running around with chrome, but even the cops say these guys are outliers. If I had one gripe, as I feel the ending is unnecessarily dark, which is weird coming from me, uh, for point of reference, this is my favorite quote from 2077. This I meant, I don't know, a happier ending for everyone involved. Here, for folks like us, wrong city, wrong people. One of the best people I knew was a paraplegic. He was my first boss, a real biz kind of guy. That took a chance on some punk kids. I owe him a lot for that. And what Stam did for Grey, that's magic right there, that's hope. If you don't have a similar backstory as me, it probably works for you. However, the overall product was great. I was expecting something a bit more hardcore Henry, but I was never disappointed. I am STEM, the system operating your body for you. Don't be afraid. Are you fucking kidding me? No. Project.hack 
We don't have the time for me to talk about the absolute brilliance that was Project Dot Hack and the solid B plus that was the sequel, Dot Hack GU. Oh, that's gonna get me some hate. Anyway, Dot Hack was an absolute fantastic collaboration of anime, video games, manga, novellas. Created by Cyber Connections 2, aka the guys you all probably know more for making some awesome anime fighting games. In universe called CC Corp, even had a meta narrative that wasn't insufferable. I fucking love this series. About the world, the most popular MMO RPG in the game's universe. And how people who have died in the game have slipped into comas in the real world. The events of which begin the anime Dot Hack Sign, continuing throughout the game's Dot Hack Infection, Mutation, Outbreak, and finally Quarantine. While the OVA Liminality goes over the investigation in the real world. Even had hidden messages in the OVAs telling you of secret worlds you could go to in the game. It was great. The whole thing kind of sort of ends in the manga Dot Hack Twilight Band. At the end of the mangas, it gave you glimpses of the Azure Flame, giving me so pumped for GU. The art was amazing. In reality, the world was created to birth the ultimate AI, a true sentient being and a god of the world game. More tragically, she is the surrogate child of the world's creator, Harold Hewick and his unrequited love, Emma Willent. The world itself based on Emma's epic poem, The Epitaph of Twilight. For anyone who's up on Dot Hack lore, I don't believe that Erna, Ulmuth, and Emma are the same person, or the reveals of her past, because that's up there with one more day on terrible redcons. This is an epic tale of friends, loves, and tragedy. Asking the question, what would you do to save a friend? What is memory and our sense of self? Art, the music, it's all top notch. A place where it all falters is the gameplay. It's 100% emulating an MMO of the early 2000s and does a masterful job of that. Too bad early MMOs sucked but I enjoy myself playing it. All the data bugs are completely eradicated. Hmm. <laughs> In which case, Kai, huh? you won't need your bracelet anymore. Summer Wars. Nope. I have spoiled enough of this. This is a Chaos Theater gold standard movie. I watch it almost every summer. If you like Boy and the Beast, Girl Who Leapt Through Time, the first half of the first Digimon movie, or Bell, not sure why you like Bell, but you do you. Mamoru Hasada is the man behind it all. A great director, and I think really understands omnidirectional movement. It's a blast. Also, an anthropomorphic bunny whooping all the ass. How do I feel about Now Punk? My hate has dulled while doing this video, I will admit. And apparently some of my favorite shit is now punk. I still stand that this is a necessary distinction that should just be rolled into cyberpunk, especially as we are still barreling down to the dark future. The future isn't what it used to be. Is now punk the future of cyberpunk? Or my bloated, rusted, buried in a freezer, resurrected as a smiling corporate AGI, wanted to go rampant, festering corpse. But let's play devil's advocate. This one comes from a fellow media, Ruth Holder, out of Neo Dystopia. She believes so. In her article, Mr. Robot and the Importance of Representation, she posits so. Uh, citing not the setting or more accurate tech against our developmental curve. Access granted. Hotel Beijing selected. General account selected. Fax charges. I know that looks ridiculous, but damn if I don't want those goggles instead of my quest too. That is a look. Her evidence is more representation. I won't go into detail on it, read the article, but her position in Cyberpunk is that pro tags are young and old white guys. And on the woman's side, razor girls and submissive AIs. Hetero and white. Psychic characters are not snow people to scent, work off old stereotypes. I won't besmirch a colleague. I'm also fairly sure she's more exposed to literary cyberpunk, Pollock, Gibson, Dix, not the genre as a whole, as outside the bubble of the classics, we've had many walks, backgrounds, and orientations of life living that high-tech, low-life lifestyle. Could we use more representation? Yeah, probably. You're asking the wrong guy, I'm probably too close to see the whole of the problem. 
Especially because, like, I like Razor Girls, and the ones I've met in Meat Space are the most feminine people you will ever meet outside the leathers. My argument is that we're running, foot crushing the gas pedal fast forward to the dark future. So much I had to stop reading Adoru, a book that came out in 1996 because the musician was suing a company for using AI to reproduce his sound. Something that just happened to The Weeknd and Drake gave me pause. If Gibson ever put lotto numbers in a book, start playing them. However, why I don't believe now punk is the future of cyberpunk, it's missing the excess. The extreme, the grunge, the edge. I'm not saying we should embrace the idea that cyberpunk should remain stagnant, transform itself to a crystallized fragment of memory of the retro 80s, would be to ignore its relevance in our time and the biggest concern, us in the future. However, telecasting the present just isn't interesting. I once had a conversation with a friend a long time ago. It was how I was fed up with modern design and aesthetics and wondered what happened to the punk future we all envisioned. I blamed Apple as I did at length at the time. He gave me a better answer. That we didn't need shit that was going to last through a war. We didn't need the bleeding edge gear because we weren't backed up to a wall. None of us thought we'd make it to our 20s. And here we are halfway through college. We scaled down and sleeked our primary way of viewing the world. And in doing so, we sleeked and scaled down the world. I blamed Apple again. He said it would happen regardless. At the time, I didn't get it. I do now, and that's why I refuse to let this shit supplant cyberpunk. One, I just don't like using a new word when the first word still works. Call it the metaverse as much as you want, you sapient tofu. It's always going to be cyberspace to me. The less insane reason? Yeah, cyberpunk. Hell, speculative fiction in general saw a lot of what was going to come down the line. And? What, are we just supposed to sit here in the future that is now? Fuck that. Keep looking for the horizon. Keep finding your dark futures. Your utopias, your far-off glittering could-bes, find the edge, fall off it, punk. Then find the next one and the next one. Reinvent the wheel, then throw it out and do it again. Be the radical dreamer. Stagnation is a death sentence. Why, God, why would I ever want to be in the here and now with all that out there? And for the sake of all that is holy, why would I name the genre after that? It's not a question. What AI tools are you using? And which ones do you think are going to make it? You all living in the gold rush of AI tools, what do you use? What do you think is going to make it and what do you think is going to disappear like Vines or Quibi? Personally, I've been playing around with AI voice changers and a little AI art when it first came out, but I have siloed on it and now I just use it for ideas. I think Blender has its own AI generator I might play with, but eh. Put in the comments what you use and what you think is trash. Well, this has been What's Up Punk. Till next time, step outside. Take a look at the world. Might be surprised how close it is to fiction. Keep on being a no good, dirty punk. You know it? You love it? Here's the spiel. Let's do it. Hit subscribe to be my subscriber. Hit the bell so you know when I've actually posted stuff. Still no idea why those two things are separate now, but whatever. And of course, hit like to appease the algorithm gods. Oh, oh fear and praise. On a list of whatever YouTubes, I am also probably not going to get any ad revenue for these videos, so if you would be so kind, check out that Patreon and the GoFundMe. Links in the description.